Thanks, Verna. I'm very excited to represent the Direct Shopper Technology team at the LEGO Group here today and take you on our serverless journey so far. At the LEGO Group, our mission is to inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow by becoming a global force for innovating and establishing learning through play. As an almost 90-year-old company, we have consistently innovated and reimagined our approach to achieving our mission, and technology has been a key enabler for getting our message out there. We use a variety of services across the company, each fit for the purpose that they were selected for. I'm going to talk about the journey of the team behind lego.com, specifically the pages where you're browsing for products, redeeming VIP rewards, or completing your order through checkout. We are the Direct Shopper Technology team with engineers in the UK, United States, and Denmark. Our main challenge is typical to the world of e-commerce. The traffic patterns are extremely spiky and with regular product launches and sales events driving customers to the site all at the same time. This diagram shows our typical traffic patterns on one of our busiest sales days. And every year, the number of visitors to the site keeps growing. Now imagine trying to tackle all of that spikiness and year-on-year -year growth with an on-premise monolith tied to back-end systems with limited scale. Back in 2017, we had a highly anticipated sales event for the Millennium Falcon set, the biggest LEGO set at the time and an extremely popular product line. On the launch day, we experienced a huge spike in traffic that resulted in our backend services being overwhelmed and all our customers could see was the maintenance page. The service that failed the hardest was a small piece of functionality that calculated sales tax. It made a call back to our on-premise tax calculation system, which very quickly reached its limits. At that point, we knew that we were on a trajectory for growth that could no longer be sustained with an on-premise system. There were three key drivers that took us to the cloud. Renting the commodities meant that we, instead of maintaining infrastructure that was not a differentiating factor for the LEGO group, meant we could instead focus that energy on building awesome shopper experiences. And you saw the profiles that I showed before. Having that flexibility to scale to support a very spiky demand profile and having the exact capacity we need when we needed it was critical. And finally, having a composable architecture down to the most granular levels enables us to have speed to market and also flexibility to keep innovating and pushing boundaries. Here is a high-level view of where we are today. We made the conscious decision to extract and focus on our business logic and decompose that across several layers of serverless services. We backed them by carefully selected third-party vendors who provide specialized services like payments providers and content management systems. Each of our layers is designed to scale automatically and independently to support an ever-changing traffic profile. And this design also allows us to handle multiple squads operating across all parts of the site concurrently. And you'll see why that's important in a moment. Our journey to the cloud started with migrating a single user-facing service, the one to calculate sales tax, and three back-end processing services back in 2018, just to show that serverless could work for us. 10 months later, we then matched our existing capabilities with a completely serverless platform that immediately started handling the same level of traffic and transactions as our existing platform. We then immediately started exceeding those rates of transactions and traffic and setting new records every few months. We started off this year with an ambitious roadmap, a growing team, and a platform that was only a couple of months old. And then the question became, could we deliver on that ambitious roadmap with twice the number of engineers all onboarded remotely and keep the platform stable, all while handling high season levels of traffic? The answer was yes. And not only have we doubled the number of services in production, we've managed to do so while handling increasingly busy sales periods. To put some numbers up to the growth we experienced in the past year and a half, we now have three times the number of engineers in the team, and we've since launched another 36 serverless services, pushing the number of Lambda functions in production over 260. The growing team meant that we had to distribute many tasks previously held centrally by an infrastructure team. So automation has been key to supporting the ever-growing number of squads and application engineers to get their services and features into production, not only at their own pace, but safely. We've moved to a self-service model where possible. For example, creating a script that creates standard integration and deployment pipelines for any new service. The ultimate goal is to develop our application engineers into DevOps engineers who own and operate their services in production. One of our first steps towards that goal was to introduce a standard where all serverless services were to implement Canary deployments using AWS code deploy. And this gives the automatic rollback when necessary. 
And that leads me on to serverless operations. We have focused on observability and a fan out operations model where our on-call team monitors some key high level metrics centrally. And then each service has been categorized based on how critical it is to our key user journeys. We then have a default set of alerts that are to be implemented on each service and tuned to the profile of that service by the squad that owns it. This is giving our engineering team a starting point of how to monitor their services in production and not only detect, but react to issues that are happening in their space quickly. The growing team means we can't have tacit standards anymore. The team is made up of engineers at all stages of their careers and with differing levels of experience with the technologies we're using. I've mentioned already a couple standards that we've set and they define what a good service means to us. They define the hallmarks of a good service that not only uses the latest coding practices and patterns that we've developed over time, but also those guidelines for safer deployments and monitoring of services so that they're easier to own and operate. We have started comparing our standards with the AWS well-architected framework and specifically the AWS serverless lens. And this has shown that they mainly are in the operational excellency pillar with a little bit in cost optimization and a bit in security. And so looking to what we're focusing on next, we want to define the standards in the remaining reliability and performance pillars. And then we can start looking at making the standard more visible. We want to show our engineers the services that they own, what state they're in, all in one place. And then we can start adding on things like maybe a leaderboard. This should add in that competitive element so that owning a service becomes a point of pride within the team. And then we can start playing with the next level of serverless operations. We have chaos engineering on our roadmap, and this should enable the team to really break apart their services, test out the failure cases for an entire third party. And that means that we can craft our shopper experiences to still be awesome, even when part of the platform disappears for a bit. It's hard to imagine that we only started our journey to the cloud back in 2017, but time flies when you're having fun, and we've learned a lot along the way. The name Lego is an abbreviation of two Danish words, lie and got, meaning play well. And when play is at the core of everything you do, the learnings and opportunities are endless. Thank you.